In this section, I'm going to show you the really exciting new feature called VST Connect SE. And it's a plugin that allows you and another performer on another part of the country or another part of the planet. And as long as they have a stable internet connection, you're going to be able to collaborate with that person, not only through a video connection, but also able to record their audio directly into Cubase. So this is a really exciting new feature, but it does take a little bit of effort to get everything set up properly. And one of the most important things that you'll need to take care of is your internet router. Now, on my router, I actually had to go through and enable the port forwarding on ports 51111 through 51113 to the internet IP address of my particular computer or else this wouldn't work. And there's also something in the manual about making sure that your firewall is set up properly. I didn't have to reconfigure my firewall, so I think I'm all set to go as far as this uh, port forwarding and firewall access. But if you can't get any of this stuff to work, make sure that you do configure your internet router properly. So now that I have that set up properly, I'm going to go to this Cubase project and make all of the connections that I'm going to need. So what I've got here is a little tune with a drum kit and a bass guitar part. Let's listen to it really quickly. So a very, very simple project. So what I need to do is I need to set up this project to work with the VST Connect plugins. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mixer and I'm going to, first of all, make sure that I have my input channel visible. So let's go to the channel types and make sure that the input channels are visible because it's this input channel that's very critical for the bi-directional communication of these plugins for collaboration. So now that I have my input set up, I have a separate microphone plugged into that input source. So now when I hold that microphone up, you can see that there's signal going in. That's plugged into the first input of my audio card, my audio interface. And if I type F4 and go to the VST connections window, you can see that I have an input bus set up and I've labeled it TB for talkback and it's plugged into my first input of my audio interface. So now what I'm going to do is set up the track that I'm going to use to monitor and what the performer is going to be hearing as well as what I'm going to be able to record. So I have my talkback input, I have the rock drum set, I have the bass track, and then I have the stereo output. So the first thing I'm going to do is add two audio tracks. So I'm going to go to the project window, select add track and audio, and I'm going to add two mono audio tracks. And so this first audio track, I'm going to relabel and call it Kent guitar because we're going to be putting on a guitar part. So this is the audio track that we're going to be recording Kent's parts onto via remote. And then I'm going to record enable the track, but I'm not going to monitor enable it. And this is important. And then I'm going to go to the second track and I'm going to call that Kent monitor. And I'm going to monitor enable that track, but not record enable it. And you'll see why in just a little bit. Essentially, this is a track that we're going to be recording his part onto. And we have a track that we've set up to have him monitor from. And then on the guitar track, I'm going to make sure that it's routed properly. So here's his guitar track. I'm just going to select it so that we can see it a little bit easier here on the screen. And I'm going to scroll all the way to the top of the rack. And if you can't see your routing section, make sure that you've got your rack enabled for routing. And now I'm going to take his recording track and I'm going to make sure that its input bus, which is this top one, is set to the talkback input channel. Again, the input of this particular 
audio input is the talkback that I have set up. See how it's called talkback? And that routing is set thusly. So one of the easiest ways for me to think about this plugin that we're about to use, the VST Connect plugin, is that it kind of intercepts the audio input and reroutes it inside of Cubase so that it can be sent to not only you, but also the performer that you're going to record by remote. Now there's one last item that I need to add to our mixer and that is a group channel track. So I'm going to go to the project pull down menu, select add track and group channel and I'm going to call, well, let's see, this is going to be in stereo so make sure your group is stereo and now I've got that one group and I'm going to change the name of that track to to Kent. So this is actually the group that Kent, this remote performer, is going to be listening to. And so to make sure that he can hear what we're going to be sending him, we need to send him the pre-recorded tracks. So this drum track is going to have its routing sent to that group. So I'm going to send that to Kent, and I'm going to send this bass track to Kent. So now both of those tracks are being sent to this group. So what I need to do now is install the plugins and then we'll actually be able to run our session. So I'm going to go to the inserts rack and on this group channel, I'm going to make sure that, and I'm just going to type in VST here, I'm going to put the QMix plugin on that group. So I'm going to install that plugin. There's really nothing I need to do uh, with that plugin, just to make sure that it exists on that group channel track. Then I can close that window. And now on my talkback bus, I'm actually going to install the main VST Connect SE plugin. So I'm just going to type in VST here and then select VST Connect SE. And then we get the control panel for VST Connect SE, we do get an information privacy window here that just lets you know that stuff's going across the internet and there are ways for people to take stuff off of the internet without your knowledge. So just read through this and make sure you understand the implications. Then you can click on OK. Now in this window, I'm going to be describing a little bit more in just a moment, but you can actually see me <laughs> right, right, right there, uh, there. <laughs> there I am. And so you can see that I'm sitting in my studio here. In this other window right here, this is where we're about to see Kent. And I'll take you through part of this interface when we get this session going. So now that we've made all of those connections, I'm going to click save really fast so that I don't have to do all of that again. And now we're going to call up Kent and start to record his guitar parts. So that'll be in the next tutorial.